Hello there, you fucking pathetic, revolting, risible, perverted, insubordinate scum. Thank you very much for joining me again for another episode of Wastecast. All I can say really is that the only thing more shameful than the atrocities and the absolutely vacuous way that you live your lives is the decaying, shredded, morally defunct society that funds, permits and allows you to continue to live and breathe the air in this biosphere with the other mammals and vegetable life which we occupy within it. So you've probably gathered, I'm feeling a little bit angsty today. Uh, <laughs> um, it's nothing funny about it really. Um, had a meeting today, my ward round. Sorry I've been away for the last two days. I spent a uh, day before yesterday in bed sleeping all day because the medication was very strong. That wasn't very nice. Um, and I just didn't really have the gumption. I was gonna, I was gonna kind of do it yesterday, but um, I just didn't get around to making one of these in the evening. Um, I just couldn't be doing with it. So sorry about that. Good things. I bought my brother a birthday present today, which was good. Um, I bought him a DJ, what is it, a Pioneer DDJ SB3 um, for him to be able to use, which was cool. Um, he's got that in his house arriving from eBay, so that will be cool. Um, he can play some, play some music on that, use it with Serato, which is nice. Um, in my ward round we discussed housing. I might have a housing placement. At, um, well, I won't say where it is just yet because I don't want to necessarily reveal too early, uh, but it's somewhere in uh, the Gloucestershire area or North Bristol. It's very close to Bristol. He said to me originally it was in Bristol, but, um, but there's a housing provider which might be interested. So in the next couple of days, I'm going to conduct um, an interview and have an assessment about housing placement. I think it's supported accommodation um, for people who have mental ill health like myself. Um, what I'd like to do this evening is um, is using my second Twitter account, not the one I've got back. So I've got my phones back, everyone. I've got my phones back. So I've now got um, the Sa Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge. This is one of the only phones that will support call recording. So that means that I can record phone calls and put them onto Google Drive like I was doing before for anybody that's followed me on that. Um, it runs Android 7. I bought this especially in the hospital um, when I was at Blackheath. I got it delivered there from Amazon. Um, so yeah, I can put the SIM card into this and I can make phone calls and record them. I've got another S6, which is really knackered. Um, but it does also record calls, but um, I had to go and buy a, a wireless charger for it today because the, when I put it on charge in Blackheath, um, it was just completely the charging socket was just completely mashed up when I got it back. Um, so um, it doesn't charge anymore, but hopefully the wireless charger will charge that and I'll be able to get some uh, juicy files off there which uh, evidence quite a lot of things um, which um, be really useful. But at the moment it's just coming up with like a black battery sign, which is a bit shit. Um, the other phone I got back, which has got quite a lot of evidence of cybercrime on it, um, from some hacked phone calls, is this one. Um, I don't know if I uploaded any stuff to Google Drive relative from this. This was my A32 5G. Um, these blue stickers in the PQ that I was at, they just stuck stickers over our phone and said if we take photographs anywhere in the, on the ward, then they'll be confiscated. Um, so I have one of those, you can still see. I've got that blue sticker there uh, from the ward in Blackheath. They like security stickers. Um, you can see on the back, so that if you peel it off, there's um, leaves like a has writing on it that says like secure it says like what does it say something yeah um, something something must 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 be sealed uh, once once removed I don't know let's peel it off let's peel it off and see what it says this one interestingly they stuck they're pretty obvious that that's a camera but on this phone there's on the on the S6s there's two 
uh, little things which are like uh, sensors, like light sensors for the brightness or whatever, for the adaptive brightness. Um, but when I was in Blackheath, they didn't stick it over the selfie camera. I don't know if that's because, um, I, don't know what, I don't know why that was. I don't know why that was. It's bizarre. I'm gonna remove this one. Oh, there you go. It says void once opened. Void once opened. They didn't stick it over the camera, they stuck it over the bit that wasn't the camera. But anyway, I got my phones back from the police. That was uh, on the day that I first missed my um, my waste cast. Found out that I'm being prosecuted by Lily Rose Beatrice Allen, the singer, for malicious communications. Not going to make any comment about that at this stage, um, but I might make a public statement to the press or to the media who would be very, very, very interested in that. Um, but I have to be very careful what I say at this stage um, because there's various complicated contraindications um, regarding my mental health and the section that I'm under um, and some problems with my health which have had some contraindications relative to um, the malicious communications which were made whilst I was in hospital. I believe. Um, so let's look at the news today. In fact, what I was going to do um, is, um, is go live on my on my Twitter page. So I'm now live on my Twitter page. Um, I'm just doing this as a verification uh, for anybody who wants to see um, what's going on and how these videos are made. Um, if you're following my Twitter page, you can just go back and follow me at Brody Likes You, at Brody Likes You. Follow me on that page because I've got my old phones back and my old three SIM cards and my O2 SIM cards. If you want to phone me up, you can phone me on 07542, sorry, on <laughs> that's a very old phone number. You can phone me on 07576. 713-026, that's 07576 or you can phone me on 07927-625270. I keep one of the SIM cards, the one that ends in 026 is in the dual SIM in this phone. Um, you can phone, follow me at, at Brody Likes You, um, and that's my normal Twitter page. I've got access to that now, um, but I had to set up a new Twitter page because I didn't have my SIM card to verify with the text. Um, but the waste cast literally come from within this room. Um, I'm going to let the brightness adjust itself and give you a little 360. You can see this is the room that I'm in. Here's my coat. Here's the phones I got back from the police um, after they confiscated them. This is my bedroom. That's a detachable magnetic uh, orange fluffy door. I'll take you to go and have a look at that. This thing's amazing. You can just stick it back up on the wall there. Go. and it just doesn't quite like it does just fall off if you um, do that. Here's the bathroom for the toiletries that I bought today. Um, nice toilet there. <coughs> Showers aren't very nice to see me. They could do with a little bit of um, a little bit of um, a retouch. They're kind of quite gross. It's kind of like Creepy crawlies and all sorts. Shower's quite nicely and blocked, but um, I'm sure these will be sorted out by maintenance in due course. This bit gets particularly slippery when you're walking out of the shower and the lighting. But anyway, any of the viewers on YouTube uh, want to see what just happened, then you can just check um, at Brody's face on Twitter um, and you can see all of the um, live broadcast there. I'm going to finish that live broadcast now. Goodbye. Please phone me, email me at brodymcleodtemp at gmail.com. Follow me on at Brody Likes You and phone me on 07576 713026 or 07927 625270. Thank you, Twitter fans. YouTube, I'm sorry about that. You have to look over at my second Twitter profile, very confusing this, um, at Brody's Face, B R O D I E. S face. Stop broadcast.
cool. So there's a live broadcast of um, something that I just did on Twitter. I won't, I won't be using that account very much anymore, so it doesn't matter too much. Um, I still haven't had any, had any requests for any broad, broadcasts, unfortunately. Um, I don't really know why that is. Um, let's have a look. So you can see, there's that, there's that live broadcast on at Brody's face. This is what the page looks like. It's a picture of my windowsill in Signet Hospital. The windowsill you can just see in the reflection behind me um, with a picture of a plant on it. I've had a really bad time in hospital and I really want to get out of hospital. Everybody here, a lot of the other patients, you know, um, just kind of take the piss. And, um, you know, obviously there's sometimes a bit of friction between the other patients. Most of the time, um, you know, they're friendly and they're kind and some of them are, are great, um, these people. So are the staff. Um, but sometimes people, you know, human beings do sort of mock each other. They're quite subtle and they're quite snide. Um, and if you know, you know, do you know what I mean? It just makes it very, very clear. Um, it kind of tells you that you're in a mental hospital. It's like, you know, you don't really need to kind of like, um, kind of, um, you know, have a kind of, um, it gives you a very, very clear picture of what's um, going through people's heads and the, the things that they're struggling with in their, own, in their own mental health. I mean, people, I don't think anybody mocks, I carry a bag, I carry this bag around with me all the time. You know, people quite often, make sort of comments about that um, or other things um, that that might be a bit different and I, I wouldn't say they take the piss that's a bit that's a bit harsh but um, um, some of them kind of do in some ways and that's sort of quite difficult to deal with most people are really friendly I get on with most people on the ward you know they're really really lovely people do you know what I mean um, but um, but yeah uh, the bags full of stuff not money um, unfortunately but um, yeah literally it, it's uh, it's it's a motherfucker to carry around all the time but I keep my laptop in this bag um, and my mobile phones and chargers and stuff because I don't want any of that shit to go missing I also keep this normally keep this blue folder which has got a whole load of stuff um, let's have a look and talk through this blue folder what, what we've got inside here's a whole load of printouts of when I was at Signet Taunton and they got my name and my date of birth wrong on loads of stuff. So you can see this is like uh, the 26th of the 6th, 86. Um, they spelt my name like about four different ways um, on lots of different documents. What else have we got? Here's a letter from the Mental Health Act Administrator, uh, Kitty Granger, which I got in 2019, said that whilst I'd been at Signet Darlington, uh, they'd uh, put me under a Section 3 without any medical legal scrutiny being completed then I've been transferred under a Section 3 from Signet Darlington to Signet Taunton where there hadn't been a transfer in checklist so like if you had like a head injury or something like that and you were um, you didn't have medical legal scrutiny then your uh, GP or your medical records might not be attached to your section notes and you might be forcibly medicated with medicine that could be really bad for you. You might have motor neurons or be a hypochondriac or um, be on antibiotics or have um, you know a kind of like a, um, a progressive de degenerative hereditary syndrome um, or kind of uh, sexually transmitted infections or you might have um, you know various different things which could cause severe sort of neurological and physiological damage if you are forcibly medicated or injected um, uh, or, or just given kind of antipsychotic tablets. Um, so anyway, they, they told me that I've been unlawfully detained. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean it's unlawful, det unlawful detention. Let me retract that statement. They told me that I'd been detained without medical legal scrutiny. Um, and what I've also got in this folder, let's have a look, is um, a, a request for a replacement consultant. While I was at um, Haytor Ward, it's run by Devon Partnership Trust, the same people who are looking after me now. Uh, I found that the, while I was at Haytor Ward in 2019, um, the consultant wasn't on the specialist register with General Medical Council, um, which wasn't so good. Um, so I've got a whole load of other uh, medical notes in there. Um, here's an example of a medical legal scrutiny checklist. Um, this was completed retrospectively, so they completed a scrutiny checklist. So it's a checklist like that. Uh, they gave that to me, Devon Partnership Trust. When I, when I put it to them that, that, that one, one hadn't been completed, they gave me copies of them. Um, if I'd taken this to, to, to if I'd litigated on this, um, 
I would have got an absolute fortune, but I didn't really want to kind of try and milk the NHS for money um, because I'd been very, very upset at that point. But yeah, this blue folder's got a whole load of other things. Got my tenancy agreement for 246 Wells Road. Um, I've got some banking papers, uh, some whole, some other stuff, and all the section papers. All the section papers when I was sectioned without medical legal scrutiny by Signet Healthcare, uh, and twice they missed the medical legal scrutiny. The fact of thing about it was that they missed four lots in total. So I got section two. There should have been one scrutiny checklist completed. Then I got assessed under section three and detained, and further detained, which should have been another medical legal scrutiny checklist there. And when you transfer a patient, it's supposed to be a transfer in checklist. So it's supposed to be. Um, you know, a further medical legal scrutiny checklist which is completed when you transfer under section three and I was transferred from one hospital and then to another hospital. So in times in total there was four lots of medical legal scrutiny checklists missed, which is just impossible to have done through oversight. Um, it's kind of like it's um, it could be lots of different things. Uh, it could be a very, very a very poor administrative pro profile if it wasn't four times in a row. You don't really make kind of four mistakes once is a mistake twice is kind of like maybe put it on the back burner three times it's like okay this is you know these people are uh, are just you know not doing their not doing their jobs properly and four times it's like right okay they've definitely chosen to oversee this in a you know kind of in a bad way but I don't want to dwell on negative stuff at NHS Devon Partnership Trust I tried to get all my data from them a little while ago um, and it took months and months to get all the data I've got a complaint at the moment in with the PALS team um, got an email back today regarding that, um, which I won't read you. Um, but yeah, the um, maybe we should just see what see what the news is saying. I still I had a war drum today. I didn't try to record it, and I didn't ask about recording. But it's kind of like you know these same people who. Um, won't let me record my ward rounds. Also, still haven't given me my section papers. I did another YouTube video, another one of these waste casts, where I talked about um, the fact that section papers weren't um, available. You know, the, the section papers weren't kind of there. Um, but there's people knocking on my door now. Um, and I don't want them to be visible in the video. Um, so yeah, um, I might have to quickly end it, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, I. I don't really have a kind of, um, yeah, these, these people are kind of just, unfortunately, although they're trying to do their jobs properly, in my opinion, it's really stressing me out because there's no accountability. They don't really have, um, you know, they're, they're not allowed to allow me to record my ward rounds and they're not giving me the papers to show that I'm lawfully detained or that there hasn't been any kind of severe kind of administrative failings like there was before. Do you know what I mean? Um, and lack of medical legal scrutiny is kind of, it's not unlawful. But it's unethical. It's dangerous. It's kind of, um, and it just—it's just a vacuum of accountability. The, in fairness, my consultant did say that she would take personal um, kind of duty to try and get hold of my section papers and medical legal scrutiny checklist for me today during my ward round, which I was very grateful for. Um, and she did um, suggest that she felt that I was almost ready for discharge. Um, that I'd made a good, you know, um, been taking my medication and I'd made a, a good good sort of recovery. My social worker said that he felt that it wasn't, I'm not quite there yet, but I don't think he's got the professional capacity to make those kind of decisions. Well, it's a lovely spot I've got there. Um, but, um, but yeah, this is not almost 20 minutes. I'll read you some news just for fun. Um, what have we got? Let's swipe left onto Google. Colchester's sunny and 17 degrees today. Which is nice. Let's put my shades back on. Aston's Martin's made a big announcement. Non-human spacecraft found by U US for decades, the Telegraph, one day ago. That's just hyperbole and conjecture. I mean, I'm not going to um, take that. I mean, it probably is true. I mean, obviously it's true. I mean, like, to, to some degree. But, I mean, <laughs> they're not going to publish those findings, are they, in the, um, in the Vision Pro? That thing looks pretty cool. Anyone seen the Vision Pro? 
three and a half K in dollars. BBC editor tries it out. I'd be interested to see what that's like. But that's wicked. Minority Report's a fucking fantastic film. If you haven't seen a film, watch Minority Report. The only person to have won an Olympic gold medal and an Oscar. I probably could have won both of those things, you know, in another dimension. I'm sure I would have loved to have done a bit of acting. Um, and I also would have loved to have, um, to have um, done some um, fitness stuff. I used to be very fit, but I'm not fit anymore. I'm overweight now. If you see a video I put on Google Drive earlier, I've got like a double chin a bit. Um, I've put on loads of weight. Um, wonder why they were knocking on my door. That was definitely uh, impromptu. It's very unusual. Anyway, let's not worry about that. What's this? Hugh Cornwell on The Stranglers' most controversial album, We Got Away With Murder, Far Out magazine, two days ago. I think The Stranglers actually really were Stranglers. <laughs> That's pretty fucked up, isn't it? Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what... Um, I don't know what I think about that. Um... Terracotta Planter. I saw a lovely thing. They've got a place at this. Um, that's a Google advert. Sell your products on Google. Terracotta Planter, thirteen dollars. Yeah, I suppose. So I am. Um, yeah, there's a place here called uh, Eleni House, which I think is a new development. They've just opened. They've just put a sign in the front door. I think, uh, or there was one just recently. A bit of paper I saw somewhere that said. Eleni House, and I was looking at my search history. I've uploaded my search history of my recent leaves um, to Google Drive, and um, they've got this thing. It's made out of flower pots, and it's like yellow. It's like a yellow pot, pot man. It's just, just a pot, pot. All, all these pots there, you know. Um, it's. Um, and that's outside. It's a fantastic bit of sculpture and artwork. If you want to see a picture of it, look, I, I tell you what, I'm not going to show you a picture of it. Maybe, maybe I could. Maybe I could. Um, Eleni House, Colchester. Uh, maps. I'll show you the picture. There's several pictures on there. It's a picture of like, there he is, a little flower pot man. Oh no! There you go. Here's the little yellow flower pot man outside Eleni House. That's the one. It's the um, definitely the best, the best one there. It's an absolute beast. Um, yeah. Um, anyway. Don't know why that's there, but it's beautiful. If anyone knows why there's a little man made out of flower pots with a yellow top on outside Eleni House at Signet Colchester, then um, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Google Drive, follow me on Instagram at McLeod Brody, all lowercase. Follow me on Facebook, Brody Nathaniel Diorsa McLeod. Um, once again, I'll show you my Facebook profile, just in case you want to add me on Facebook. Um, just show you a picture of my cover photo, uh, or maybe just a picture of, you can have a look at my, my profile, it's there, it looks like that, just search for it. Anyway, that's 24 minutes of your life, you'll never get back. Thanks for watching, come and see me. Phone me on my phones now if you want to, or you can keep trying to phone me on the ward phones if uh, that pleases you, or you can phone me on uh, Skype, if you're on there uh, or you can get me on meet on Google um, if you want to set up a sort of a meeting or a zoom uh, I've got a Microsoft 365 family account I'm sure I can get I'm sure I've got meet at the bottom of there if I've got some little purple thing yet yeah, it says or chat it says I've got one one something on the purple blob wicked thanks so much for watching um, I had my hair cut today I went on leave looks terrible doesn't it look like a mangy cat um, 
good day to you. All the best. Go fuck yourselves. Cheers.